Carolyn, I always say Caroline, you should be Caroline, Carolyn Hyams from Firebrand Talent. Welcome, welcome to PR Warrior TV. It's been three years and a lot's happened and we're going to delve into a lot of great stuff all around owned, earned and social media, content marketing, all of that sort of stuff. Thanks, Trevor. It's great to be back. I cannot believe it's been three years since our last interview. It's amazing. I know, and, and a lot's happened. So why don't you tell us very quickly what you do, where you are, all of that sort of stuff. So we've got a good handle on on the business. Okay, no worries. I'm the marketing director for Firebrand Talent, Aquint and Vitamin T in Australia. Yep, and they're uh, recruit, for recruitment agencies. Yes, recruitment agencies with their various offerings, but um, all specializing within the digital marketing and, and creative area. So Fiber and Talent is for permanent recruitment and Vitamin T is for freelance recruitment within agencies and Aquent is contract recruitment for large corporates. Does that mean you get three salaries across three different businesses? Oh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> Listen, I'm having fun. That's the most important thing. It is indeed. It is indeed. Now, Carolyn, it was three years ago that I probably called you out of the blue and said, um, uh, probably a little bit over actually, I, I really loved what Firebrand Talent were doing on social media and you had a blog going and you were doing some really good stuff and, and I felt uh, ahead, of the, ahead of the curve in terms of a business really embracing uh, social. And and so we did do a, a talk, which is available on the PR Warrior YouTube channel, but it, it, so much has happened since, and you, you continue, um, I've sat back from afar, but also we know each other pretty well now, and and the business from the marketing perspective is, is just continuing to build that audience. And so I wanted to unpack today what are you doing? Because as we know today, marketing and comms is not just one thing, it's it's lots of things. And it's as much about attitude and mindset, uh, which I believe you guys have got the right attitude and mindset. And that's why everything's flowing from it. So can we unpack those? Are you happy to unpack owned, earned and social media or content Absolutely. marketing, social media and influencer relations, that side of things? That sounds perfect, Trevor. Right. All right. Well, so this could be a mini case, not even a mini case study, a, a, a vibrant big case study of what to do in today's hyper-connected market. All right. So just quickly, how many people have you got in the business? You've got offices in Melbourne and Sydney? Yeah, we probably have about, it's not a huge business in Australia, probably about 28 people. Yep, yep. In Australia. And, and uh, only two in the marketing department. Okay. That's you and one other. That's Danielle. Yes. And and how long has the business been going for? So Firebrand's been going since 2010. So we're talking, we've matured now. You're we're a six-year-old six year company. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Now, I will say, because uh, we spoke about this the first time, this is how you started. You started on social and content because there was no marketing budget. You, that was, it is what it is. And you know what? I'm not sure if much has changed, to be honest. <laughs> But everything's working for you because you've put in that yeah. time and effort and, and now you're starting to, over the last few years, reap, reap the rewards of that. And I've on my Reputation Revolution podcast, I've interviewed uh, Greg Savage, uh, who you know very well, obviously, because he was the founder of Firebrand Talent and he goes into it a little bit detailed in that regard as well. So if people are interested in checking out the Greg Savage interview on Reputation Revolution podcast. Okay, so let's start off with owned media because as you know I'm a big believer in owning your own media becoming your own media channel and that's the starting point for all comps all comps and so let's call it owned media content marketing whatever we want okay so you let's start with it you have a content hub you have a blog that's uh, well trafficked sounds like a drug doesn't it and uh, <laughs> it, 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 how, well, the, the, it's called Ignition, Ignition isn't it? Uh, ideas Ignition. Ideas Ignition blog. Firebrand um, Talent Ideas Ignition blog, right. Yeah. And how many articles do you, because you're very regimented in when the articles go up, and I will put my hand up and say that I write for you guys as well. Um, so I just submitted an article today, actually. So um, don't know when that's going up. But um, how many articles do you put up? Because you have a content calendar 
I know. We, yes, um, regimented is one way to put it. Anal is another way. Very organized. <laughs> organized. Um, you're very organized. Very <laughs> organized. Uh, we, we do have a very strict content schedule because we do have a lot of content that we publish. Uh, yep. And we just need to make sure we manage it. It's actually a lot of work, you know. It's a, it's a long-term game and, and we need to make sure we really organize. So we publish um, two – this year we've been doing two blog posts per week on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Yep. And we publish at exactly the same time each day so people know when to expect it yep. uh, and um, because we manage a lot of uh, guest contributions we just need to be super organized and you know mm. give everyone notice and and uh, give them deadlines when the content's due give us enough time to set it up um, proof it make sure it's uh, SEO friendly and and all the bits um, that make it work on the fire brand blog Okay, so how many articles? So that's two a week now. What was it previously? It was three a week. Yep. Uh, and um, that is quite high maintenance. So yeah. uh, we so just because um, we're looking after three different brands, we we sort of just we thought we'd just bring it down a notch yep. and yep. just make sure that we manage it really well because we've got you know two other blogs to manage as well. But it works. It works. Very very well, and um, we um, we get about at the moment we get about forty eight thousand monthly visitors. Fantastic monthly the, visitors, not page downloads. No, so wow, yeah. But the the one thing that we did, and 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 this is maybe a, a good learning experience for anyone else who is thinking about uh, launching a blog as well as having their website. Is previously our blog and our website were different websites and um, late last year we relaunched our website and actually integrated the blog with it and that's probably the best thing we ever did okay and and from what which perspective uh, well certainly more traffic and also very importantly you know it's one thing to blog but in the end we're a business and we just want to make sure that you know our service offerings are very visible to um, those who hire and those who are looking for work. So previously when you did have it unattached, but it never looked unattached, it always felt like it was part of the overall thing. Yes, it did. And that was intentional. Yeah. But from an SEO perspective, it didn't work. Right. Okay. Well, that's, so, a, that's a really good yeah. lesson there. And I know, I, I know a lot of uh, businesses and this is a conversation I, I have with them um, every now and then is that you know they can't get it past the that well they're not on WordPress but they want a WordPress blog and they just um, set up a WordPress blog and make it look and feel and for all intents and purposes it's on the same uh, platform and no one else the same website and no one really knows but as you're saying there's that underlying SEO if that's important to your business then that makes a big difference okay so that's so. Did you find you've because I know the last time we spoke, I think yeah, it was around about thirty thousand marks. So you you know steadily building in terms of uh, monthly views or not not in views monthly um, traffic, and so you're doing less content and it's probably going up. So that extra blog post a week did it make a difference? Did you feel? Uh, it you know I think. You know, as as the years have gone by, our reputations increase, so more people are coming to visit the blog. Yeah. So, so I suppose. Um, so going going bigger earlier was probably a good thing, and then yeah. you can pull back. And I that's something I'm hearing a bit too that people are uh, you know they used to blog a lot now they've pulled right back, um, but they they're, they're still managing to maintain. I've always felt that you know it's a question you're always going to get asked. Um, how many? How much should I blog? And and I and I've always said that you know. To twice a week is a good, probably a minimum. Um, yeah. You know, the more that you're putting out there, obviously, the more more that's being shared, the more windows into your into your website. So I think that you know, more doesn't necessarily mean better. If the quality's yeah. up, though, it's going yeah. to be better to have a little bit more than a little bit less. And if you go down to one a week, um, that's great if you keep it. But if you go to one a fortnight, it's you know, unless you've been blogging for a while and you've got yeah. you know five hundred posts. Uh, in your back pocket, then there's a ch there's that 
you know, you'll drop off completely and we, we don't want to see a, a blog that hasn't been, uh, a business blog that hasn't been touched for 12 months. Yeah, I, t I totally agree with you, Trevor. And I think, um, I think the key here is consistency. Mm. So if you're going to be blogging once a week, then make sure you blog once a week and make sure it's on the same day, you know, so people start expecting that regular yep. content. Yep. Um, but it's also about managing your time because it is very time consuming, content yep. marketing. And, um, you know, I think people just need to look at what they can manage to make sure that the content that's being uh, published is of the best quality possible. Now, you don't write all of it. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You don't write the whole blog. <laughs> no, my goodness. Uh, I I have written some uh, blog posts in the past, and uh, I really should get back into it because I really enjoyed it. So it's just you know so busy. But we don't uh, we don't I don't write the content. I just simply don't have the time. But what we did do is come up with a um, a strat a winning strategy where uh, we have actually approached uh, industry thought leaders and asked whether they would be interested in guest blogging on the Firebrand blog. Um, in exchange, uh, well, obviously it needs to be of mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, we get amazing content, but as a result, um, the industry influencers, and uh, I'll count you as one of them, Trevor, um, really um, we promote the hell out of them. So, you know, we, um, there is, we, uh, through social and content marketing, they can really take their brand to a global level. And, um, you know, each post that's provided probably has about a six month lifespan. So we will go out of our way to help their personal brand, their business, um, and ex in exchange we get the most amazing content that's relevant to our audience. And I can attest to that too. Um, it's uh, We'll go into the social media and how you do that in a minute because, um, it, it, they're every, as I said at the start, everything's intertwined. So you yeah. know, you've got that influencer relations that you're really good at. You've got the, the platform for them to to reach an audience that they might not necessarily reach on their on their own volition, and then you've got the social that works, um, you know, in, in in a number of ways for you. So we're going to get to that in a minute. Mm. So the other thing is, you rarely, well, you do write about, you know, employment things and about careers. So you've got two audiences. Obviously, you've got um, the the people who are the candidates and the talent. On yep. one hand, and because you're the marriage broker between the two, and then you obviously have the uh, your clients per se, the people who pay the money are the the agent ad agencies or the PR agencies or the you know the brands um, mm -hmm. who are doing the employing. Mm -hmm. So with your content um, strategy, which one are you? How do you get that balance right? Because and and the people that who are the clients will probably become candidates at some point because everybody That's marketing it. and PR yeah. move around. So there That's is this it. nice little crossover. But how do you manage that that balance? Well, in the end, people are people. Whether they're hiring or they're looking for a job, they're a person who's really interested in you know uh, subject matter in the industry that they're working for. So really. Um, we are targeting people who you are with really educational and valuable content, whether they're a job seeker or, the, or they, they happen to be hiring in their job. It's all about thought leadership in the digital marketing and creative space. Mm. So, yeah, we, we'd like to say we're, you know, a, a great resource for, for the industry. Yep. Um, we Talking about recruitment is boring. You know, uh, you know, no one wants to read that. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think it's uh, helpful. Um, I mean, yes, career advice is helpful. It's helpful yeah. for everyone. Of course, people of course. who are actually working, people who are not working, and you have a little bit of that. You don't have a yeah. heap, but you have a, enough to uh, whet the appetite of people. Absolutely. In fact, um, it's often our, our, our best performing content. Okay. To be honest. Everyone's interested in career advice, no matter where they are in their career. Uh, but but it, it is slanted towards the industry that we recruit in. You know, it's very digital focused. Of course. And so yeah. just 
uh, to give people who are watching this video or listening to it on a podcast a bit of an example. Well, oh, a question without notice. Off the top of the head, <laughs> what are some what are, what are some of the titles or not? You know, the articles that have that have really broken through. And just to give people an idea that it's not necessarily just about your business. Uh, well, I can give you an example. We actually um, published a, um, a blog post yesterday that's gone surprisingly well. Um, the, um, the topic is five ways you're sabotaging your job search. Oh. <laughs> um, and, you know, within 24 hours... We've had, I'm just checking now, uh, live as we speak, um, we've had 378 LinkedIn shares. Wow, now, that's quick. That's good. Hey, that's 24 hours. Yeah. Um, to me, that's a top performing post. Yep. Um, people don't share unless they're interested. Yep, yep. Uh, and so, so, so for me, that's an indication. It's kind of that social proof yep. that what was written was uh, very useful to people and they'd like to share it so are you saying to is that indicative that the the five ways to do things or how to or the seven tips that's still that that listicle type stuff still works it's as long very as much as long as there's meat behind working. it mm. i you know it it's um uh, for me i am very passionate about providing content that's educational, mm -hmm. helpful, and valuable. Yep. Uh, and But it needs to be written in a way that's easily digestible. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you're talking about blog content, um, yep. the reality is people tend to skim mm -hmm. uh, and are just looking for snippets of what's really useful for them. So often when you're putting it in a list form um, or at least breaking up the article so you can – take a look at a heading and go, yeah, I'm really interested in what this person has to say in this particular paragraph. Just make it really easy to digest. But, yes, those sort of listicles, they do work because yep. uh, people, people, the perception is it's going to be really easy to read. Yep, yep. And your average size of articles is probably 500 to 1,000 words. That's a really interesting question because – I'm finding that the long form content is also working very well. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the 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 blog posts, for example, that you have submitted, they tend to be on the longer side. I try um, and start small, but I go deep in. <laughs> I go deep in the topic. <laughs> uh, you know, Dion uh, Liu as well, who is one of our guest bloggers. Her, I mean, when you read an article. A blog post from her. I mean, you you need to grab a coffee and uh, and really knuckle down and read the whole thing because there is such valuable content in her post yep. that a, a short one just wouldn't do it justice. Uh, you know, and then you get some sort of um, shorter pieces that that work well as well. So it really, I think, mixing it up is good. I, I agree. I think the lesson there too is that. There is no one size fits all, and I think no. we tend to think that a lot. And uh, you know, we're looking for the hacks and the the system, and and really, good co good content's good content, whether it's five minutes or whatever. We need to be aware that people are skimming stuff, um, but there's also times when you know people hunker down a little bit, and and often the, the research I've seen is the longer form content often will be shared a lot more anyway than you know the real short quick stuff. So, yeah. because again, it's representative of what people share is, you know, part of their brand, their personal brand, I suppose. And um, if something's got a little bit more depth than meat, they might want to be thinking, well, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sharing around the place. So good content, good content. If it, if it deserves 500 words, that's all you give it. You don't stretch it out to 2,000. Um, yeah. But if it's a decent topic and you need to dig in, well, sometimes doing it in 500 words won't do it justice, and um, although you're leaving the crowd wanting more, which is isn't that what we're all trying to do? <laughs> um, and so you've got a, um, a an email database that you've been building over the journey. So do, do you find that that continues to grow as the readership grows of the blog? Yes. I'll um, firstly, can I say that email marketing is not dead in the slightest. Yeah. It is key to your marketing strategy. Uh, and in fact, if you if you have a, a truly integrated marketing strategy, 
your blog, your website, email, social, it's, it should all be integrated. So for, for our business, email marketing is incredibly important. Um, we grow our email database all the time through um, our events, which we're going to be talking about Did soon. Yep. And, uh, and uh, you know, just general growth anyway through the individuals that work in the business, through uh, social media, f through people coming to the blog, subscribing to the blog. There's um, multiple ways to actually get onto our email database. And that's really important because when you've got something really important to say, uh, you can use your email list to say it. Something more specific. So as you yeah. say, an event or, or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, and and you know it's not there just to push the push the company line all the time. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's boring. Like I said, it's boring talking about yourself. Why not uh, provide some value for the people you know who are reading your emails? So it's really important. I, I agree. I agree. That's why we think alike. Um, <laughs> there, so when I talk about platform, I talk about an aggregated audience across all your channels. So blog. And email, uh, obviously your owned media channels, uh, you've got control of those. And and social, even though you don't own it, you own the content you put on it, but you don't own the platform. Anything can happen at any time, as we know, with Facebook changing the rules or, yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, networks are doing whatever they do. But you're on um, you're on Twitter, so you've got a big, um, big presence on Twitter, about 35,000? 35, 35,000 followers, yeah. Yeah, um, you're on... Uh, LinkedIn is about nine thousand for you, so that's that's good. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think Facebook's about five thousand, just over five thousand. Would that be about? Uh, yeah, Almost. about four thousand. LinkedIn's I've... probably about just over eleven if you include our LinkedIn group yep. and our company page. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're on how Instagram many, many, as well. How many on? I didn't know you had a group. How many on the group in LinkedIn? Uh, 2,800. Okay, so nearly 3,000 in a group and then 9,000. So solid solid numbers. And interestingly yep. there, you know, we all gravitate straight to Facebook all the time, but it's probably, you know, one of the smaller ones for you. Um, yes. Uh, and that might be because it's business to business, but it, it's kind of, it's important to be there often because, you know, your candidates I get a feeling that a lot of the Facebook stuff that you do is more for your candidates. It yes, tends to very be much lighter so. and it, t it shines a bit of a spotlight on the business itself, um, yep. which is what you do um, Instagram for, which is very much about um, taking people behind the velvet rope of, 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 of Firebrand Talent um, yes. and also to take photos and stuff at the uh, events that you run. So I just want to go back to it quickly for the events because events are – a content marketing play, you run a couple of different ones under series. So you've got a quarterly Digi Talks one, um, which I was lucky enough to speak at two months ago, um, and which was good. And uh, Melbourne and Sydney, and so that's every. Is that every quarter? Every quarter, yeah. yeah we have every quarter, so there'll be eight of those yep. uh, a year. And then we've got another type of event. When you say eight, that's Melbourne and Sydney. That's not. Her. <laughs> yes. Everyone's thinking yes. She doesn't Melbourne know her maths. <laughs> yeah, Melbourne. Four speakers, two <laughs> cities. <laughs> yes, exactly right, exactly right. And then we have another type of event called Put It to the Panel. Yep. So rather than have a keynote speaker, we actually have a panel. Uh, and this is sort of a deep dive into very specific uh, topics within the digital space. Mm -hmm. And they run every two months in each market. So right. just to give you an idea, over this year, we've run 20 events. Wow. So that's that's significant. Yeah, that's, that's right. A, and it's, a, it's, it's um, a also significant part of our content marketing strategy. It is. And then you do social from that. And yes. uh, when I spoke in September uh, at the Melbourne event, um, I had a blog post ready to go and we yep. did some uh, video for it and uh, the whole the thing's starting to really integrate really nicely. So the event actually provides content. That comes from people who are probably reading the blog on your uh, email list. So when you put the email list to promote the event, they turn up. They're all tweeting about yep. you. So there is this beautiful synergy across across everything there. And how many of the speakers are writers or authors of your on your blog? Well, 
That's a really good question because you, That's you've, what I'm here you've, for. Prob- <laughs> you've probably noticed that either our guest bloggers end up being DigiTalk speakers or being on a Put It to the Panel event yep. or the other way around, they our speak speakers and then you... become guest bloggers. Yeah. And I think it's all about, I really do think it's a, it's a relationship you have um, with these um, wonderful thought leaders. I think it's a real give and take. And um, once, uh, you know, if we have someone who is a great speaker and who, who also blogs, I really, uh, to me, I just want to, you know, that they're giving their time mm-hmm. to us and speaking to our audience, which is amazing. People love it. And then I, you know, I like to think, you know, what else, what else could we do to partner together? How can I help you more? And how, obviously, how can you help us more? And and um, the speaking and the guest blogging just goes beautifully together. Yeah, and then, you know, and then what else can we do? Like, for example, um, in your case, Trevor, ho- hosting your workshops in our office, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm always looking for ways we can actually partner together and, um, and, um, and, the, and the, all the influencers that we work with seem to be really happy with the relationship that we've, we've built. Um, and I think you, you nailed it there. It, it is about, you know, it's relationships between the two. You're not, a, you know, you're giving them a platform um, and then you're, you're promoting them and you're helping them along the way in, in whatever way you can. And uh, very, very powerful. And also connecting people with one another, I think, is quite important as well. So, again, that's that ecosystem that I think that you're bringing to the table. And these events, too, I've I've spoken twice. So the early days was really early days for it and um, a a number of years back. And that was done in the boardroom at your offices in Melbourne. That's right. I think there were only 30 people, uh, which we thought was amazing at the time. And then we thought, you know, why not go bigger? And, And these days we... At each event, so and uh, that's, you just froze you know, that's grown over three years. You just froze. <laughs> you just froze. We didn't get the number. Two hundred and fifty people. Excellent. We got it. Jeez. Okay, you got Skype. the number. <laughs> Skype. If you, if if you're on the video, you'll get you'll understand that. If you're listening to that on a podcast, we're keeping it real. So um, yeah, and 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 even more registrations on top of that, and and, and in a really lovely venue, both lovely venues in uh, Melbourne and Sydney. So. Uh, That's fantastic. Social media, social media. So you've got this platform. um, So you've got 35,000 on Twitter. You've got, you know, 9, 10, 11,000 on LinkedIn, you know, 5,000 on Facebook um, and plus your blog, plus your email. So it's it's significant size. It's a significant size that you've built. And I will say that uh, you and Danielle, two, two marketers, plus Others in the Firebrand talent team are all very active on Twitter, particularly, and you guys are popping up individually as well. So you add your collective uh, followings as well. Is that part of it? You know, like I talk about a brand being connected to the, you know, to the to the marketplace, the community in in which it operates, which I think you guys really do. And it's not just you and Danielle, or just the brand, but it's it's a number of your. Um, Firebrand Talent employees. I think Firebrand Talent in particular very much so we do need to be connected. We need to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk uh, in the space that we recruit in. So um, we, everyone who joins Firebrand gets training on Twitter and, yep. and um, uh, how to build their personal brand, whether it's LinkedIn or, or any of those platforms. So they, um, they're well equipped. Yep. Um, they're given amazing content on a silver platter. Yeah. There's heaps, uh, heaps of amazing content uh, to share. And uh, we'd really strongly encourage them to be social, uh, which is uh, quite unusual, I guess, for brands. I think it is. I think it is. And it's, it's not you will do this. It's more of an in- empowerment and encouragement and, as you say, training and, and wanting them out there versus so many businesses don't want them out there. And, yeah. and so you trust the people to do the right thing because you've employed them. How many, how many businesses out there, you know, hate the fact that their, their people are out on, on social media? I, I would say um, there are a lot of big brands who are very nervous about it and, uh, 
you know, I think <laughs> the customer is key and you want to kind of show how authentic you are and, and that we're people behind the brand. We're not just a logo. Yeah. So I think it's really important that the whole workforce is out there. And um, uh, um, don't get me wrong, they, our firebranders see the benefits in being social mm. through referrals and mm. recommendations and, you know, being able to answer questions quickly and I, I think there are massive benefits, benefits of being on social. And so when it comes to that, like, again, they're part of your platform. They yeah. obviously, um, you know, do it because they're interested in it and they know the content's coming up and, you know, they, they – I you know, you're spoon feeding them in one way because you're, you're creating the content on the website of their employer. So that helps. But do you do much in the content curation space for the brand's uh, social channels, not the personal ones, the branded ones? Yeah, uh, definitely for the brand social channels. We we uh, we just get the fire branders to curate their own other content because they theoretically should be reading and consuming all the time. Uh, but but very much we do share a lot of content that is not ours. Mm -hmm. um, I would say even more so than our content, yep. as long as it's relevant to the audience who are following us. Of course. So, so do you, is that part of your job? Yes. Or, yeah. uh, mine and Danielle, we both uh, are – reading we subscribe to lots of blogs uh, yeah. and you know we, we're consuming content all the time and you know god bless buffer is all i can say <laughs> <laughs> buffer is a really good uh, scheduling buffer tool. is an amazing tool to you know you're reading something you like it you press mm. the buffer button and it's scheduled and uh, you can choose which platforms you want to post on you can customize uh, depending on which platform you are post, uh, posting yep. on. It's just absolutely fabulous. But uh, content curation takes a long time, but I think it's really appreciated. I agree. I, I think that, you know, you're pumping out a fair bit of original stuff, so that's why you're going to have, a, you know, a fair bit of that going out. Um, and, and a lot of it's kind of evergreen, so particularly on Twitter I'm probably yep. talking. Uh, here you can, you know, you can put that out a lot more because the chances of people getting inundated on their stream on that day are pretty very, very, very slim. But, yeah. you know, the content curation side of things, it's all part of that ecosystem you're building. Um, you do it for the people who are already writing for you. So, again, that's giving back to um, the influencers and the, and the contributors to the blog uh, for their personal stuff. And while it might sound like you're just pumping stuff out and people say, oh, that's all Twitter, it's, it's broadcasting because you're using Buffer, uh, a, you don't want to be putting it out all at once as you're curating because that will drive people nuts. But the other thing is you guys are, are omnipresent on it. I've, I've been to your office. So I know you've got the, all the screens up and, and uh, <laughs> you know, if, if someone has a question or puts stuff out, you're very much ready to talk to them as well, whether on your, that's, that's probably the, the balance you've got to do on your own personal one or as firebrand talent. But, you know, you certainly are getting in contact with people and, engaging with them so it's not just one way at all not at all and and you know what it's it's really hard to get attention we're talking twitter now yeah. gosh it's it's become incredibly hard you know back in 2010 2011 you know everyone was listening to everything you were saying but these days it's really hard to get attention but there are ways to use twitter in particular where you can sift out you know all the noise and really hone in on the people that you want to be speaking to um it's it's, it's really easy to know if someone's asked you a question on on twitter and you yeah. can answer in real time i think that's super important and and it's a missed opportunity for many brands who are actually not using it as a customer engagement, customer service tool as well. Yeah, they're using it just as broadcast and yeah, and not tuning in to see what people um, are doing. And and it's funny, I, I see it quite often. If you you know you give a, a, a hat tip to a, a brand or a business or whatever, and they'll like it and they'll retweet it, but they won't say thanks or open use that to open a dialogue for something else. So it, it, yeah. it's a massive lost opportunity, I ah. believe. And, I and I guess that that's the other thing is that uh, I was just about to ask is what are some of the, you know, the changes are it has become a lot more broadcast, but that also opens up that 
you know, if you do stand out by being useful and helpful and personal, you actually will stand out uh, because people aren't expecting that. But what are some tips then that you've got for people on who are running, um, you know, community management, for example, on, on, on Twitter and, and Facebook? What are you finding? What's working for, across the platforms for you now, across those probably the three main platforms? Um, so what's working on Twitter? So uh, unfortunately... Uh, you need to be more frequent on Twitter than ever before. Yep. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize you can't just send a tweet. You've published a blog post, you send a tweet, and then you move on. You, you, just, you just can't do that because chances, like you said, the chances of a person that you like to target being on Twitter at that particular time, seeing your particular tweet, yep. is like next to none. So, How many times uh, would you tweet a day on the on the Five brand talent. On the five brand talent, I would say, sounds like a lot, but I would say probably 30 to 40 tweets a day yep. at least. Yep, and, um, and on weekends. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We um, when we when we schedule our tweets, which is really important because you can't be there all the time mm. tweeting. Um, especially for our own content, um, you need to vary the times. Uh, in order to catch your audience, I guess. So yeah. weekends, nights, day, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of vary it up, I, I would say. And, and Facebook, given that the organic reach of Facebook's been throttled, how, how are you finding it these days? Have things settled down a bit? Um, uh, you know, wh wh how, where does Facebook fit for you guys, given that you're essentially a B2B business, but, you know, you're active on Facebook? Why well, is it kind of B to C as well because on Facebook we tend to talk to our uh, we tend to target our content to talent. Yeah, I guess um, so. It's B to C, yep. So uh, and and like you said, make it a bit more fun and useful. We find the career the career articles tend to work the best. Yep. Um, uh, um, I still I don't know. Facebook's still a disappointment for me. Yeah. I have to say, mm -hmm. but you need to be there because if you are being checked out as a brand, people will go to your Facebook page and see what you're posting and they'll go to your Twitter and your LinkedIn comedy page. So you, you really need to be there and, and kind of show, um, you know, the sort of, you know, your thought leadership in the space that you're yeah. in. And uh, so I think that's really important. Uh, and also we do use it as a bit of an opportunity, kind of like Instagram, to, to give people a glimpse of the DNA that makes up our brand, which is yeah. basically the humans behind the brand, like you said, yeah. a glimpse behind the velvet rope. I love that analogy. <laughs> uh, uh, so we use Facebook and, and Instagram and very Instagram much for that. that. So we'll share what's going on in the office or any celebrations and things like that. And what's really fu quite funny is that we, we, we would get more engagement in posting some stuff about, you know, what's happening behind the scenes, uh, you know, as opposed to the content that we post. Yeah, as in, the, as in the blog article content yeah, yeah yeah that's and and that's consistent with what i kind of hear around the traps as well often and, and it is that behind the scenes and and the thing is you've got a strategy for it you're not just putting the same stuff across everything blindly bang uh there's a no. bit of thought put into it so in terms of engagement you know i know some businesses are getting tremendous engagement on on linkedin i was only speaking to someone uh yesterday and a, a client and, and just a new client they're just saying how it's working so well for us. We're just not using it enough, um, and it's mm -hmm. it's there, and it's it's showing us that people are interested in what we're putting up. And so, you know, the goal then is obviously to do it more strategically. What about yes. yourselves? Well, I know they're different. They've got different strategies, different audiences. But just in terms of the level of engagement, uh, where do you think uh, LinkedIn is? LinkedIn is incredibly important to us, uh, surprisingly important. And uh, when we look at, let's let's talk about, uh, you know, content from our blog, I would say that LinkedIn, uh, besides Google and um, uh, organic and direct, I would say LinkedIn is probably the next referrer to the okay, content so of our blog. Let's unpack that first. Direct, so people already know you, you the community yeah. that you've been building and and, and what yeah. was the second one? Uh, organic, organic Google, the search. Oh, so, so just like so two organics. One is that they know you anyway. One is yes. through pure search. 
for your search. That's hard. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's that's um, and that's because you got to work. Yeah, because <laughs> we don't do that, any ad ad words or anything like that. That's just the content that yeah. you're putting out there. People are finding yeah. the article and then they're they're, they're onto your yeah. website. And so yeah. the third, so it must have been a nightmare for you when you went from one blog to another in terms of platforms, but we won't go there because. <laughs> I don't think that's ever an easy thing and hopefully it doesn't sound like Google's um, it hurt you in that regard. And so the third one is LinkedIn. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So we're and talking then traffic. Twitter. And then Twitter. You know, okay. don't discount Twitter. I don't. It is a huge, not you, I know you don't. We both very much believe in the power of Twitter and I'll continue to. Um, but it's, you know, it's probably number four. Okay. As far as cool. refer to our, our content, which is absolutely yeah. fantastic. So LinkedIn's high and you're getting engagement too, which is important. Very much so. So yeah. the company page uh, is absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in sharing our content. And also our entire team uh, yeah. shares their content via their own LinkedIn profiles and there's lots of engagement and sharing there too. So it's like a, a double whammy. It's, yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's that's when it really works. Now, I'm going to refer to your YouTube page because uh -huh. you do – I mean, you don't do a stack of video. But you've no, got not a stack. You've got some videos going back, simple videos, interview tips, going yeah. back to – I'm reading this – four years. Yeah. One's got 1.6 million views. I know, right? <laughs> and others have got 383,000 and then, you know, others have, you know, in the thousands. But it's yeah. just, it's hard to get a handle on, you know, because people don't, um, you know. So these are older things, but it just goes to show that these are digital assets that, you know, some of the earlier ones might not have as many views. But over the journey, they all add up, don't they? They all, you know, it's the, it's the... Um, What's the word? The collective. It's the cumulative effect of, of, of all the content that you're putting out. And some will go more nuts than others, but yeah. you're still, um, you know, putting good content out there. And video. Where do you, where do you think video? Now we've got video live. Have yeah. you done any video live? You've, you've, I know uh, you've tried it from the event. You tried it from my event. And unsuccessfully, but um, it wasn't. I'm very... It wasn't the subject matter, by the way. It was the Wi-Fi, but still. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, but uh, I, I'm I'm very keen. Video is key for us now, and yeah. Yeah, just watch the space in 2017. It really is massively high on our agenda. Um, it's. It's, I, th I think it's so important. You know, I think you've got to mix up the content. And um, I think what's happened in the past is we haven't produced as much video simply because of budgetary restraints. But these days, you know, anyone can make a video. Yeah. yeah and in fact, um, I would say the trust factor is far higher if you see a sort of organically made video rather than a slick marketing I video. Agree. So. I agree. So is that the, the, the future of well, – not the future the future but next year is focus on video probably a yeah. bit more of the um let's say the quick and dirty you know the non-massive edited polished uh, yeah. and a bit of live yes very you know, much so i'm, I'm definitely well, on our events i'm i'm i'm, I'm determined yeah. to uh do some facebook live for for our events they're so fantastic you know it'd be great to yeah. to get people who can't actually make it to actually watch it yeah, and, and of course it gets archived. And um, have I heard right that it sounds like LinkedIn is talking about going live video? Did I hear that right somewhere? Certainly you've got it with Instagram have mentioned it this week as well. So um, you'll have multiple channels through which to do it. And Periscope now is, uh, you can now watch it on the web page, um, which is only in the last week or so, I believe. So. so basically, there's no excuse not to produce video. <laughs> no, no <laughs> excuses not to do it live. You try one, that didn't work. Try another, one, just keep going. Yeah. Uh, but that's fantastic. Awesome. Well, gosh, we've covered everything. We've covered content, which is the owned media and the really importance of building that base and that audience. And, and really, it's, I think, going back even further, it's the mindset. So the mindset is to think about audience first, uh, create value and 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 with your materials or your information to be very educative in the content you produce. Um, you know to to get the quality up, then tap into the network 
of people the, uh, who are in the industry and who are actually putting out content and to build those relationships, mutually beneficial relationships with them. Uh, database or opt-in subscriber list for your email is key. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Email marketing is not dead. It's very important. And then it's all the tools. So Twitter, really, you've got to put in to get out. I've always said that. And uh, you've backed me up there. So tick. <laughs> um, <laughs> LinkedIn has got some amazing, uh, you know, it's who knows where it's going to go now with Microsoft bought it and what the future holds for LinkedIn. But as it stands, it's, it's very powerful. And I'm hearing that more and more and more. And people just, I don't think businesses are using it enough. Mm. Um, and, and I think that that's probably a mistake. I think, you know, it's, it's technology-wise a bit under Facebook um, and they're a bit slower to adapt. But when they do, then, then there's the, obviously the needs there, given it's a more of a conservative audience. Uh, Facebook, you've got to be there, uh, but have a strategy for it that's not necessarily blindly everything else you're doing. And, uh, and events. Events are content. Yeah. And don't just do one-offs, but make them as part of your content editorial strategy, or the editorial plan for the year. Yeah. So there's a lot there. And be present. You've got to be present. It's about the people behind it. So um, that's one thing that, you know, everyone knows you're involved and, and Danielle and, and others within the organisation. So yeah. Uh, all of those well, things I, come together. I couldn't have summarised it better, Trevor. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm lucky enough to, you know, as I said, to uh, be involved in the, the Firebrand community and um, and to, um, you know, I, I, I love the blog. There's some fantastic authors on that blog um, and people that have been in the industry a long time and adding some great value. But it's also some up-and-comers as well and some mm. emerging talent who are a bit younger and, and got an opinion and a perspective. And it's something that I always say is that, you know, if you're a young gun and you're, you've got, you know, a story to share and got ideas and insights and perspectives and opinions you want to share with the world, it's sometimes hard to do, but it, it kind of, um, you're giving them an outlet to do that. And I think the ones that have grasped that are, um, you know, will see re rewards in terms of their personal brand over the journey. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I'll, I won't take it too more, much more of your time because Twitter's probably going nuts by now. <laughs> and um, and only one little technical glitch in the middle, so that was fine. And uh, We um, did well. We did well. So thanks very much, uh, Carolyn, for being very uh, open and transparent with what you're doing there at Firebrand Talent. And, of course, you're doing other things with uh, Aquent and Vitamin T as well. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Trevor. Thank you.